Hey guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. Welcome back to the shed. About 18 months ago, we had a an attempt at repairing this Sony Trinitron uh, CRT TV. I found a few problems. We replaced a capacitor that was out of spec by a long way and it was leaking. We repaired some corrosion on the circuit board. I found some dry solder joints that were obviously needing re-soldering. And with all those attempts, we still didn't fix a bright white line right across the front of the screen and I've learned lots from all your comments. We posted the video as a fail but I like to think of it as a we were just pausing in the repair just to gather some information. 18 months later well I didn't need to take it this long but you know we've had a farm clean up and other things going on. I'm back to repair it now. I got some really good help in the comments so everyone pointed to the vertical output IC or the vertical deflection IC and uh, I've done a bit of checking I can buy them online I've pulled the circuit board back out of this and I'll show you what I found okay here's the main board out of the TV and we look at this side and here we have the vertical output IC and I'll get as close in on this in a minute it actually has some damage that I never noticed all those 18 months ago uh, I'll link the original video underneath as well and you can see that we bridged a little bit of corrosion there on the circuit board with a wire. Uh, the capacitor just inside this heatsink we replaced because it was leaking. So we did some repairs, but we didn't solve the problem. And now it's time to order a new vertical IC. And if we have a closer look at this one, I was trying to work out the part number. And there's a big hole in it. That's not supposed to be there. So it's obviously had some fairly major internal conflict and it's erupted and there's a little hole in it uh, it did make it a bit difficult to read the part number and to work it out and if i get the reflection in the right place you might be able to make out some of the part number i could read the last uh, three numbers and i think the fourth right on the edge of the hole is a seven so i went onto google and i checked out the model of the tv and we managed to find a schematic diagram for it which we see here, it's a KV2185AS. And zooming in on the schematic diagram, we find the V out IC, which is IC551 on the circuit board, and that matches the number on my board. And it's a LA7830 um, IC. So I've ducked onto eBay and found which eBay page was it? I've usually got way too many pages open. Here we go, I found this one, the correct number, LA7830, available in Australia for $8, and I think it was $3 postage, if I remember correctly. So I'm going to order one of those, and once that turns up, we will check a few other components around it on the board, and then we'll continue this video, and hopefully we can have this TV working by the end of it. Okay, it's been a few weeks, we've finally got the part. Um, I've been in Tassie since I last filmed this. And I had this out before just to make sure it was the right one, but it appears to be. This is the packaging it came in, though. I'm a little nervous about it, though. I have to admit now, I read a lot of Facebook groups about electronic through pair, hoping to just pick up a few little gems of information. Most of it goes over my head, but I'm still learning. But a lot of them get on their bandwagon about you shouldn't buy parts off eBay or AliExpress or or um, any of the, the large online shops because there's so many counterfeits and some of the guys were saying that just about everything you buy on eBay cheap is a, a counterfeit part, it's not original, it's going to cause problems, don't do it. And they're saying buy from reputable electronic supply places such I think uh, as DigiKey, is that one, and Mauser. But anyway, I have purchased this so hopefully it works. I don't know if it's a counterfeit or not, I can't possibly tell, but it's the right number, it's the right shape, and hopefully it does the right job. Uh, but I think in future I might open a, an account with a proper electronics supply, even JCAR, I think, although I understand there's fake parts going through you know, a lot of businesses these days, it's pretty hard to tell, but anyway, eBay is probably the worst place to buy them. Hopefully this one works. Right, so I need to unsolder... Uh, the old IC here, remember we had that little wire link we put in, so 
uh, and I have checked all these um, the solder points around it. I've resoldered a lot of them. I even found a few others around the board that looked a bit dodgy. So I've resoldered lots of possible dry joints. I did find a fair few when I first went around it, but I don't know if there's any more. It's pretty hard to tell. Um, and I've checked a couple of the components around this IC, like there's a diode and a few resistors and other capacitors. So I've lifted legs on some of those and checked them. So hopefully all we need to do is replace this and we're good to go. Okay, all the solder points are loose. We can now undo this screw. We're going to need to replace the heatsink compound. Looks like there's lots on here though. Now, well, that, there we go. Beautiful. Old deceased part extracted and does it have a mica washer or anything? No, it's just the component straight onto the aluminium. I'll wipe the old heatsink compound off and I'll put some new stuff on. Okay, we'll put some new heatsink compound on there. I don't know how much you're supposed to use. And this is grey rather than white. That should be stacks. And put our new component in. Hopefully the legs fit through the holes, they should. There we go, and we'll press that down, and now we need to get the screw through there. I'll have to line that up, I guess. Use a toothpick. There we go, we're pretty good right there. Okay, perfect. Now we just need to solder the legs in. And make sure our little wire link is connected. Okay, that looks okay. I'll just make sure there's no little bridging pieces of solder through there. I do believe we're ready to put it back in the TV and give it a test. Okay, here we go. Ready to power it up. I've got everything plugged in correctly. I'm fairly sure. I'm pretty confident now that everything should be okay on the board, but who's to know? So I'm filming this as I'm just about to turn it on. It'll be handy to have it on video if something goes horribly wrong and the coroner needs to know what happened. Here we go. All right, we have power. I'm not sure if the main switch is on on the TV, but at least we have no smoke or explosions. I just had a peek at the front of the TV and it's obviously not switched on at the main switch. So let's go around to the front. And I believe this is the safer side of the TV. So I'll push the button. Power's on. We have sound. What's the string screen gonna do? We don't, ah, look at that. We don't have a white line. I believe it's fixed. That's absolutely fantastic. I'm really pleased about that. I'll hook up a DVD player and see how the picture looks. Well, as you can see, guys, it's working perfectly. Sorry about the flicker. I've put you further back so it's not quite so mesmerizing or annoying. TV works great. Good picture. The sound's good. I'll just turn that down. Today's a training exercise. Protecting the Blenheim bombers. So I'm really pleased to get this done, even though economically it probably wasn't really worth it. I've learnt a lot. We've managed to save a Sony Trinitron from the e-waste. It still has a few little problems. The little door off the front control panel is broken off. I've got it somewhere, and it's only the door that has a break. The actual little pivots are okay here. Also, the little buttons on the volume and the channel control here are loose. They've got a plastic spring clip behind them which is broken so as the plastic ages it just doesn't fare well they still work as you can see 
but they don't spring back quite as they, how they should. I also don't have a remote for it, but hey, it's a going TV. I've saved it. I don't know what it's worth. I'd probably just put $100 on it or something, but I'm just really pleased. Actually, I'm not sure what the best thing is. Getting something to sell, getting something out of my shed, or succeeding after a lot of reading and learning and even a failed attempt. So all very satisfying. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.